March 9, 2020. Are LED grow lights harmful to humans? Uh, getting back to the garden scene here a little bit. I use indoor grow lights for microgreens and my indoor greenhouse. Especially useful during the winter when I don't get a lot of light up here in the northwest. Are LED grow lights harmful to humans? The short answer is generally not. Though there are occasions when it could be a could pose a health hazard. We discuss the rare times when LED grow lights could pose a health hazard and how to minimize those risks. There are several factors that affect the safety of any grow light. Intensity, wavelength, and duration. Intense lights will always damage your eyes regardless of what wavelength that light releases and the duration. Intense lights can cause burns on the skin and a sunburn on the retinas it will interfere with your ability to see. So what it comes down to is exposure to bright lights of any kind late in the evening interferes with natural sleep wake cycles. The body reads this light as an indication they should be awake and that prevents people from sleeping well at night. That is why doctors advise turning off bright light sources like TV screens, cell phones, and overhead lights two hours before bedtime. And what's the paint dry? <laughs> this, of course, means not standing on a grow light right before you go to bed. And it means you want to turn off grow lights in your living area two hours before you try to go to sleep. Now, generally, the blue light coming off these uh, grow lights is harmful to your eyes and fluorescent lights give you skin cancer so if you've got a lot of fluorescent lights in your house or your work well maybe you shouldn't be living in your cubicle at work because you're getting the fluorescent lights <sighs> LED lights originally contain potassium potentially hazardous heavy metals like mercury that created a biohazard if you were cleaning up a broken bulb such that people wanted to avoid physical contact with a broken material and cover their faces when cleaning it up. The problem was originally so bad that pregnant women and children were not advised not to avoid broken LED bulbs. However, the burned out LED bulb that was intact posed no health hazard at all. And LED grow lights are not as fragile as glass bulbs in general. So do LED grow lights contain hazardous material? Mm, yeah, maybe. More recent LED designs are both ecologically friendly and recyclable, and they do not create a health hazard for the owner. LED light arrays consisting of bulbs encased in chips are almost impossible to break. So, really what this is telling you, and I'll, I'll go over this real quick with you, most wavelengths are not harmful to humans. However, LED grow lights that put out ultraviolet light are harmful to your eyes. This includes, but is not limited, to the fluorescent LED grow lights. HPS grow lights and metal halide grow lights. Any blue light could emit ultraviolet light. You can tell if the ultra UV output is high if you're getting a tan while working under your grow lights. On the flip side, pair red lights are harmful aren't harmful unless at a very high intensity. And, you know, one way to protect yourself is wearing protective gear around these, uh, especially for your eyes. Uh, UV glasses are a good idea. A better idea is just to turn the lights off while you're in the room, right? And this goes into the 15 best LED grow lights reviews, blah, 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 blah. And there's only one reason I really want to show this to you. They, this is all Amazon links that somebody's trying to make a buck off of this website. These are called microsites. I've seen them all the time. But I'm going to scroll all the way down here to this little chart. Uh, where was it? Oh, come on. Let's see. We're getting there. There it is. I want you to see the effects of each color of light on indoor plants. With the invention of the LED grow lights, they can now be used to manipulate the physical characteristics of plants to suit your desire. Some of these lights and their effects on plants include ultraviolet light. Now let's talk about this first before we do anything else. Generally, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. So gamma rays are deadly. 
X-rays are not even fun. And ultraviolet rays are generally, UVA and UVB are not so bad for you, but getting into the upper range of UVB and UVC, that's harmful to biological organisms. So should you wear protective UV glasses in, in your indoor greenhouse? Of course you should. And with the UVC hitting the ground nowadays, if you're going to go outside, cover up and wear some UV sunglasses to protect your eyes because they can really burn your eyes out quick, people, especially up north, up where I'm at. And then in between the ultraviolet rays is what we call the visible light spectrum. And it goes all the way from purple to red. This is, this is the visible light you can actually see with your eyes. Infrared, you, you can't really see infrared too well. Uh, but if you knew something about solar panels, solar panels can also collect infrared light along with the visible light to create energy in the solar panels, just in case you didn't know that. So you got about a range from the visible light to some, some parts of the infrared lights where solar panels can actually collect the, um, the energy and, and create energy for your solar system. Now I do know that they are working on solar cells that actually will use ultraviolet rays. And you're going, well, why would they do that? Well, you do get some UV naturally from the sun on the Earth, but the application would be more in the space. Um, it, 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 it would allow them to collect more energy while they're in space on their, on their spacecraft or their balloon for all you flat earthers. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about ultraviolet light. 200 nanometers to 380 nanometers is the range of the light. When the plants are exposed to ultraviolet light for a long time, it damages not just the plant, but also harms humans. Hence, it is better not to expose plants to ultraviolet light. And then you got violet light. 380 nanometers to 445 nanometers. It promotes the color, taste, and fragrance of the plant. Now, if you're wondering what nanometers means, that means one, my, one to ten to the minus nine meters. Okay, so you you're probably familiar with centimeter and millimeter. So that's a hundredth of a meter, then that's a thousandth of a meter, and a nanometer is simply a much smaller wave a wavelength, much smaller distance that you measure. And, you know, the distance between the cycle is the measurement of the, the wavelength. And then if you flip that, you get a, the frequency. So that's one over time. So uh, Blue light, which is bad for you, eyes, it's 450 nanometers to 495 nanometers. It improves the growth rate of plants, and that's why you have them in your OEDs. Um, I suggest if you're going to get any grow lights at all, just get the full spectrum ones if you can. Um, some people buy them individually, um, like the green is 495 nanometers to 570 nanometers. It encourages the production of chlorophyll and serves as a pigment to properly view plants. Okay? means it turns them green and creates and helps with chlorophyll production. Yellow is 570 nanometers to 590 na nanometers. With the yellow lights, plants show less sense growth, unlike that is attainable with the blue and red lights. So, then we talk about red light as far as a combination of blue light with red lights. And that's 620 nanometers to 720 nanometers. When blue light is combined with red light, it helps the plant produce more leaves and crops. This, however, depends on the plant being cultivated. In far red, which is 720 nanometers to 1,000 nanometers, this light color hastens the degree of conversion of photochrome, uh, cytochrome, I mean, which is in turn reduces the time taken for the plant to go into a nighttime state. With this, the plant produces more crop. So, it's almost inevitable that you're not going to be able to avoid the blue light for damaging your eyes, so wear protective equipment. Of course, uh, everything will be in the show more box, the links for all this stuff, so you can read it for yourself. Um, I'm not going to go over these uh, 
these coral lights they're suggesting because uh, they're just trying to sell you a product on Amazon. I really like this one right here. Um, <coughs> for forty-seven dollars, forty-six ninety-nine. This is the Monus L T5 LED grow light, four feet. That means it's four feet long, full spectrum sunlight replacement. It's a 60 water, high output integrated fixture with a rope hanger for indoor plants, hydroponic seedlings, and whatever. This is the kind of light I would get. Okay, and I didn't see this one before, so I didn't get this one unfortunately. Um, it's not a bad value. It, it's about ten dollars more, and I paid for the other ones that I, I bought. Here's another one, but the reason why I don't like this one, um, this grow light here, is because it, it turns your everything purple. And if what I mean by that, let me show you. This is my little indoor greenhouse from two or three months ago, or something like that. Okay, those are all green beans, by the way. And these are the tomato plants. They all go all the way up to the top now, and I'm six foot one. I still have plenty of room in this little greenhouse that grow in my den. Um, but you know, it makes all the plants grow purple, and so when you try to do a video, yeah, you get a purple video. <laughs> so this is another one. It's about three dollars cheaper, and it's a 60 water as well as a full growth, and it's four feet long from stem to stem. Um, you want to make sure that when you get these grow lights that they're chainable. And so I actually bought these ones, and they come out to about thirty-four dollars a piece. Okay. And they are full spectrum. They're only 50 waters instead of 60 water, but they're still four feet long. You can the chains are very versatile for hanging them up and down on your racks. So the only problem is I don't like the the purple pink light that it produces. It makes it harder to do a video. Almost have to turn it off, and just do a video during the the daytime. But for your value for your buck, this is a good one. And this is a good one. I don't know if this one is chainable. I have not really looked into it. Um, let's see. Mm, I'd have to look even harder on that one. Um, let's see. It's kind of cheesy, that rope, too. I didn't really like that. Um, no, I don't, like the, I don't like the hanger for it. That really would not, you know. Let's see. It looks like you do get a... Yeah, it looks like you can uh, connect them, daisy chain them. So read into that before you actually go for those. You may spend more money instead of buying uh, something like uh, this right here. Because these, they just plug end to end. You, you can just chain them all in one plug. And this, of course, is the the uh, 80 water, which is the ones I would have liked. But I'd rather have one that um, it's full spectrum, which is this is, but I'd, I don't like the pink purple lights on them so if I was to choose one I'd probably get uh, this one right here even though it's a little more expensive um, I like the when it's just got the white color instead of the purple so there you go um, I probably have about I don't know 14 four footers in my for my greenhouses and stuff like that and if you're gonna grow stuff indoors and you ain't got a window, it's got a lot of sunlight that you can put it in front of, or a greenhouse, if you're going to do this down in your basement or something, uh, you're going to need grow lights. And so if you're going to get into the microgreen business, or you just want to grow, a, you know, some people actually grow that uh, wacky tobacco yeah, for the states and stuff. I know some people that do that in Michigan. Um, but if you're going to grow like a, just a garden downstairs in your basement, or you're going to grow microgreens for a business, or you're just going to grow it for yourself, you know, you're going to get some racks and these four foot length LED grill lights are about the best solution. Um, forget all those little round and square ones that people buy. and I mean, just they just really, if you look at them, these are not very big and they don't cover a lot of area and they, they're much more expensive. And so I don't really see the use for them other, you know, that they have a lot more intensity in the light. Um, you know, 600 watt. You don't need 600 watts to grow anything, okay? A 50 to 60 to 80 watt LED grow light will do just fine and grow your plants just fine. I get plenty of tomatoes off mine. My plants grow like crazy off the full spectrums. So instead of the gloom and doom, I thought I'd go into our LED grow lights harmful to humans? And the answer is yes. Uh, it could be if you're not careful around blue light. 
and or if they emit some UVC light. Uh, so really read into what they emit for light. And with the chart um, that I showed you on this other page for the, the full spectrum explaining this, you might want to read up on this right here. This is section five on this. Uh, let's let's tend the garden dot org. Read up on this and, and find out what this light actually does before you actually order some grow lights. But I would get full spectrum grow lights, and I would get the four footers if you plan on using them in any industrial or just for your personal use if you just grow in trays of trays of microgreens. I do that all the time. So yes, blue light on LEDs can be harmful to your light your eyes so make sure that you wear UV protection glasses if you're going to be around uh, LED lights uh, instead of turn them off. Been warned. 